we've transformed the living room by expanding it and turned the old good room into the kids' rumpus room. And I'm here for it. So what is this room? I feel like we're in the good room. Not What's a good room? You come in off the front door and here's the fancy lounge and no kids allowed in here. <laughs> it's not unusual for these older style homes to have two living rooms and this house has exactly that. This is actually quite a big room. It's a big room, but my initial instinct is that it feels- The wrong shape. A little narrow, yeah. right? Mm. I might need to- Think about this one? Have a little think about okay. this <laughs> to figure out where everything is going. I'm gonna turn what I call the good room into a kid's bunk slash rumpus room. We've already closed off those doors into the kitchen dining area. Mm. Now what I'm gonna do is add bunk beds, a little reading nook where they can have a bit of quiet time, lots of space to play and have activities, and I'm gonna put in a projector screen so you can keep the kids entertained while you're next door in the kitchen entertaining your friends. As for the remaining living room, I'm gonna make the floor plan a lot bigger by pushing out that back wall and reclaiming a bit of space that's in the garage workshop. Then, by closing off the access doorway to the garage and converting those sliding doors into a window and putting a desk there, this stops it from being a thoroughfare and more of a destination in the house. These simple modifications are gonna give the room so much scale and it's gonna become a really generous space for a larger family. The doorway to the garage is gone and that makes me so happy because it means this living room is no longer a thoroughfare. It's a nice destination spot when you're in the house. Because we already have the new hallway from the garage, we don't need that access into the living room, which means we can close that up and have wall-to-wall -wall cabinetry on there. And then the other big change I'm making in here is that this was also another entry exit spot with some sliding doors. Because we have the bifold doors in the kitchen dining space, you don't really need to have another entry exit point in the living room. So those sliding doors are gonna turn into a window. And that's a nice opportunity to put a writing desk or a console, just a great little moment in the back corner of this living room. And that means I have all this room to play with, but I'm a bit greedy and I want more space. I want this living room to be huge. So there's a little bit of extra space on the other side of this wall into the garage workshop that we don't really need. I've taken the mantle off this fireplace. That's ready to go. This wall can be knocked out and I'm going to do it under the careful supervision of Tim. Ready to go? I'm ready, but do I just hit anywhere? Yeah, just give it a belt. Well, let's see how we go. I'll go around the other side, I'll make sure, um, I'll tell you when to whack it. Okay, all right, awesome. How's that? Sounds about right. Okay. Hold on a sec. Hello. It's a start. Keep going. Okay. Oh, a bit easier. What do you reckon we've gained? Oh, so you'd have to at least gain probably 13, 14, I reckon, square metres. Ooh. Just looking at that. Let's see. Is my laser eye. What do you reckon? That is two metres. Two? And what's that, six metres? That's so as well. About 12. Not bad. Might need to calibrate the laser eye a little bit, but that's yeah, pretty good. That was pretty close. I'll allow it. That's awesome. That is so epic. This room's gonna be giant now. Now you just gotta go shop and fill it up. That's the fun part. Although, this was pretty fun. So... Oh, I'll let you finish then. <laughs> okay, mate, thanks. Tim, I'm gonna go find him. <laughs>
Australia voted for light and bright in this house, but that doesn't necessarily mean white on white. I'm gonna show you how to get that look, but by using color as well. You also voted for modern Australian as the style of the home, but Hamptons was a very close second. So I'm gonna sort of mix the two together by keeping the classic Hamptons profiling on the cabinetry and through the soft furnishings and furniture, but adding a distinctly Australian color palette in the mix. So I'm starting with my paint and I followed my own tips on how to select paint for your rooms. And this first one, maybe I was playing it a little safe, but I started with a nice bright color. Then the second pot, I wanted to do something tonal, a little bit darker. And then I have my wild card. And this is a color called Recycled from Julux. And what do you know? This is exactly why we do this process. I'm going to go with this because I love how it's a little bit warmer and there's this beautiful Australian earthy color to it. Oh no, <laughs> I've done it again, haven't I? <laughs> this is not intentional, I swear. <laughs> you know what? Good color, good color again. <laughs> Then to keep playing on that Australian tone, we're going with the same color that we used in the laundry, but look how beautiful it is with this color recycled. And this is the Thurman from Julux. It sort of connects both ends of the house together. And then one last little connection point, I'm bringing in the hardware from the kitchen into the living room. All right, let's talk about the colors in the kids' rumpus now. What your kid loves when they're three to seven is not necessarily gonna be the same as when they're, let's say, seven to 14. So what you wanna do when you're choosing colors for their room is start with a foundation palette that can grow with your child. Trust me, this is going to save you money in the long run because all you need to do then later down the track is change out some soft furnishing and some details. So in our room, what we've done here is started with the base color from Julux, aptly named Preschool. It's a really subtle gray blue. And then we've got a darker accent cabinetry, adding in a bit of a natural element to soften it a bit. We've got timber shelves, some rattan and jute. And then just to age it down a bit and sort of put it in an age range, we've got this great poppy mustard tones coming in in the soft furnishings. And how cute is this for a detail of a door handle? It's a little button. There's my level. I've been looking for that. You have to uh, put a tracker on this. No, no, wait, wait. Well, I've got you. No, no. no. Give me some oh, <laughs> Trust me, it's a great question. All right, all right. Um, I've taken the fan and the gas heater out of this room. Yep. But I was gonna put another fan in, but then how are we heating this? It's a pretty big room. I definitely think split system. Okay. It's gonna heat the room, cool the room, and it's super energy efficient. Great. Um, so can I add that one to your list? Yeah, Bunnings actually have an install service. So I'll give the store a call. Yeah. And um, yeah, get it organized. Freeze up a bit more time. And then, last question before you go. Where do we put it? Because we've got this wall back here, or there's the one over there by the archway where it could go. It's probably the only two spots. Well, I'm thinking this is an external wall, mm -hmm. so I reckon that's going to make the install a heap easier and yep. cheaper. So if we can try and stick to that wall, I think that'll be the way to go. Too easy. That's it. That's it? That's everything. Beautiful. All right. Great. <laughs> This is where we're at with the kids' room. It's actually coming along really quickly because we've got our wardrobes in, we've got our bulkhead up here, and it's not just cute, it's actually really practical because it's gonna hide the projector screen behind it. And it was actually pretty simple to do. I just made a template and cut it out of MDF. Then we've got our standard cabinetry, put some timber on top of it, and this is gonna come our reading nook. Bit of cushions, bit of styling, make it really comfy. Some shelves just need to be drilled in over here on the wall. And these are also from store. And to be honest, the reason this room is coming together so quickly is because so much of this product is actually off the shelf and you can do it yourself. And so that all that's left is to give things another lick of paint, put the bunk beds in and wallpaper the ceiling. That's right. 
I'm gonna wallpaper the ceiling. Let's have a chat about the windows in this room. Now, you might remember the original windows were floor to ceiling and a bit wider, which I understand they probably wanted to let in as much light as possible, but that's not great for privacy when a room's facing the street. So by making them smaller, you still get plenty of light, but we have some added bonuses. We were able to insulate the bottom part of the wall and replace all the old windows with double glazed windows, which means it's a lot more energy efficient for running your house. As another layer, this is a great bonus, we have thermal blinds which stops the cold air from seeping through the windows and into the room. And they're block out blinds, which means when the kids are having a nap, you can have this room in complete darkness. And for our final layer, we've got these beautiful shears which are great for privacy and just soften the whole space. The paint your own cabinetry in the living room is in, and whilst there are some really great colour options off the shelf, the advantage of paint your own means you can customise the colour to the palette of your house. I've gone with some tall and some short joinery, and this stretches the entire wall, so it's great for storing bulkier items, and look, any chance for extra storage is a win in my books. All that's left is some open shelving here, that's for personal items, you know, the things you really want to look at every day. I'm obsessed. So obsessed. When selecting indoor plants, there are a few things that you need to consider. So in a dark corner like this one, going with a darker foliage leaf will always work a lot better, such as this spathophyllum. But when it comes to a really big window like this one with lots of sunlight, choose a multicolored leaf or a patterned leaf because they tolerate the sun better. Now when it comes to selecting plants for a kid's bedroom, I've got some great tips. So follow me through the dining room how good do those mandarins look? And the kitchen, through the hallway, to the kids' bedroom. Now, I've made this hanging decoration with macrame for my air plants. Now, air plants are great because they don't require soil to live in. So you won't have your kids throwing soil at each other. And the best part is they purify the air. Just don't forget to name your plants. I love DIY and I love arts and crafts as well. So for the kids room, I've created these cute animal wall hangings and they're gonna live on the walls next to the bed. We're gonna use some of these old placemats that I had lying around the house. One's gonna be a bear out of this one and we got a little lion. It's pretty much ready to go. So let's start with the bear. I'm gonna trace out two circles. We're gonna glue them to the back of this placemat for ears. And the reason we're using all these woven materials is because we have some of these natural textures and fibers going into the kids room and it's just gonna make the whole room feel cohesive. So flip it over and we have a bear, at least the shape of the head. 
Now we just need to add an eyes, nose and mouth. But because I want to make sure I have everything in the right spot, I'm just actually going to draw it all out on masking tape first. Stick it down, make sure it looks cute before I commit to it. So it looks a bit funny, but we're just going with two circles and just this little oval. I think that's pretty cute. That all seems to be in the right spot. So I'm just going to dab it on with this little sponge brush and I've got some leftover paint that we used outside on the fence. So didn't have to buy a whole tin of paint for this. This is so much fun. I feel like I'm on play school. <laughs> it's pretty neat. And you know what? I'm actually just going to use my marker for the rest of the face because it's a lot easier. I've got one final thing I'm going to do to finish it off. I picked up these craft boards in store. They're only a couple of bucks. You can get a little gold picture hook and just hot glue that on it so you have something to hang it on the wall or you can even use sticky hooks directly on this to the wall. The world's easiest, quickest DIY ever. When it comes to living rooms, no two are the same. The shape, the size, it can change from house to house. But here are a few tips and tricks that you can take away when you're styling your space, starting with the couch. Now, everyone's got one. This is our anchor piece. And let's be honest, this is probably gonna be facing the TV. This is your everyday piece that you're gonna be living in. But the rest of the furniture in the room, let's call it your entertaining furniture because they're the pieces that are really gonna complement everything and tie it together. Now, over here, we have a second couch. We were able to fit it with the space. But on this side, I have two armchairs. Now you may only fit one in your space, but they're great for entertaining because furniture facing each other means it feels conversational. It's really casual and light. The next part of your living room styling is gonna be about layering. And I'm talking layering your textures, your rugs, your throws. It's gonna make the whole space feel really warm and cozy. And you don't have to go bold with your colors. I've just layered all these neutral tones. But again, it just gives it all of that warmth that you need in a space. Now, I've got a few little bits and pieces of styling left. Inga's gonna do a great terrarium on the table and I'm gonna custom make an artwork for the wall. And would you believe it, but everything that you can see, the cushions, the blankets, couch, rug, even the lamps, it's all from Bunnings Marketplace. How good is that? Window seats have come back in fashion recently and it's because it helps utilize every corner of your home. And here we've taken the original windows, framed them out, and you get this great big artwork out of your landscape. And it's the perfect spot to curl up and read a book. The good room is now the kids room slash rumpus room. There's plenty of space for activities 
and lots and lots of storage to keep all the mess and toys out of sight when you need them. Knocking out that wall and making the living room bigger was the best decision for this space. Now we have a really generously sized room, which is perfect to kick back and relax, but also plenty of space to entertain. We're back. Welcome home. This house was a 1980s house, but I think we really nailed the modern Australian breed. We've shown Australians what they can do with design and what they can do themselves. We're done. We can stay out here for hours. <laughs> Do we get to live here now? We just get to relax now. <laughs>